So what a lot of the entrepreneurs and their companies have in common is that they're engaging in big amounts of data gathering. So big data is always an important topic and I want to further discuss that with three entrepreneurs. So I'd like to welcome to the stage Nick van der Giessen, Maartje Duin and Hanneke Schuurmans. Give them applause. Oh. Yeah. Stand, uh, let's stay yeah. here. Yeah. So you're all engaging in uh, data gathering with your companies. What is your challenge when it comes to data gathering? Maybe we can start with you, Nick. The challenge is uh, not so much technical, it's mainly um, institutional. People have to be willing to find new ways to, to um, go do, do things differently than they did before. And now people are ma mainly stuck in the old ways of collecting data. And there's so much possible, both technically um, and through communication, but they have to get out of their little rut, let's just say. They have to really start thinking outside the box. And then there's so much possible and there's so much uh, progress uh, just around the corner, basically. Yeah, and just to give an example, what does your company do and how is that related to this challenge? Uh, we focus on Sub-Saharan Africa. We are trying to uh, uh, run a network of 20,000 weather stations in a financially sustainable way. And that last part is extremely difficult, but also extremely important. It's not just a matter of throwing things uh, out there and then hope it will all work. Now we really have to think about how we can make it pay for itself and how we can make sure that uh, 10 years, 20, 30 years down the road, it still is there and still is paying for itself. Yeah, and for the data, to collect the data, you need the participation of civilians, maybe farmers, exactly. to share their... But also governments. And also governments, yeah. Do you recognize the challenge? And maybe you can shortly explain what your company is doing. Um, hi, hello, I'm Maartje Duin from the local water authority um, uh, Hollands Noorderkwartier. Um, I'm from Texel Maid. I uh, live on the island and uh, Mr. Anan already told about the Ijsselmeer here, a uh, big fresh water uh, uh, lake. Uh, Texel is surrounded by salt water, so we don't have a connection with that um, really big fresh water solution. And uh, we have... Um, uh, <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> Uh, we have crowd uh, monitoring, we have an app and sensor on the smartphone and uh, a, a lot of parties uh, are measuring the salinity on the fresh water uh, on the island. And what is your challenge in terms of data gathering? Is there something that maybe the audience can also help with or uh, what needs to improve to, to also help your company? Uh, we use a sensor and uh, the one we use right now is a little bit, um, uh, gets corrosion on the tip, so it's uh, extremely short uh, life. <laughs> yep. And uh, we also collected a lot of uh, data in the uh, past three years, the farmers and the nature organizations, and we are measuring, so yeah, what can we do with all the data we collected? Yeah, okay, that's a really good question. You also prepared a question, right? Something that you wanted to ask the audience in terms of data gathering. Yeah, but so maybe first... Yeah, of course, yeah. We have yeah, done, yeah, um, uh, Hanneke Schuurmans from Royal Haskoning, DHV. We are a consultant uh, company worldwide and uh, focusing on one topic, which is uh, flood resilience. And uh, we've developed uh, an application, a smartphone application, which alerts uh, civilians for upcoming rainfall and uh, also the flood risk, uh, which is very actual. And we uh, did a pilot, and I want to thank also the Fire Water Foundation from the Netherlands in uh, Accra. So I'm very honored also to present this in front of uh, Mr. Kofi Annan, who's from Kumasi, if I uh, am correctly informed. And uh, Accra is one of the cities that uh, really is facing with this uh, uh, challenge of become more flood resilient. Yeah. And then in all your stories, I hear a lot of the need for public institutions to help you with the data gathering, because it's also a public need to get the results to civilians, because it can save lives or it could prevent 
uh, bad things from happening. So um, are there a lot of public-private partnerships already that, 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 that help you? Or are there more needed? Or? Well, I, I think uh, we are facing two challenges. And one is a technical one. One is the technical one. Sorry, I have to hold this up. Like this. <laughs> um, uh, and I uh, think we already have some partnerships and it can always be better. Uh, but the technical challenge is something I don't worry about that much. I think the biggest challenge is uh, that we involve also uh, governmental organizations and industries uh, in order to become together uh, resilient. Because uh, the most vulnerable people on earth uh, are often also the poorest. Um, so having a sound business model is, I think, the biggest challenge we are facing. Yeah, Nick, maybe you want to add to that? Yeah, I think so too. That's uh, and also from uh, the donor community uh, perspective, for example, when I look at the Paris agreements, I'm very happy that people are willing to invest a lot in these problems that we're talking about, the resilience, climate resilience. Um, but investing is not the same as throwing money at things. You know? So we have to be extremely careful how we invest Think about the sustainability of things in, in public-private partnerships and not just say, oh, yes, you know, we'll send a check and that will take care of things. It's really the longer-term stuff that uh, Hanek is also talking about, the cooperation, the trust building, that is uh, very difficult and needs, uh, needs time and, uh, and effort. Okay. Very exciting moment because we have an incoming live connection from South Africa. From South Africa. Yeah. I hope we can get it on screen because there are people watching us live right now, as I said earlier, in the live stream. Well, I have to look there. Hi, Marcus and Tande. Um, we're on a live connection, so welcome to our event here in the Netherlands. And you want to join in our discussion about big data. So do you recognize this discussion? Yes, we do. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Thank you. Good afternoon. Yeah, we can hear you. It's perfect. We're the big audience Thank here. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Did you see our discussion about big data? Well, we're struggling to, to, to hear because the, the, the sound goes on and off. But we're trying to follow you. <laughs> so have to work on better internet connection around the world. <laughs> so yeah. what, is, what is your challenge concerning big data gathering? Yeah, I picked one component which uh, one of the presenters was talking about uh, regarding the use of civilians, you know, to assist in data gathering. Because in most cases, uh, we have also recognized the same problem here. We have got few stations which are real time. And in most of the places where we need information for our planning and for our forecasting, we don't have data. So we need to find ways of collecting data you know, in those areas which are, which we don't have stations in those places. Yeah. Do you have a message here for the, for the audience? Yeah, sorry, I interrupted you. Okay, thank you. Yes, I was saying that the other challenge that we also experience, especially on the quality side of things, is that um, we, we collect data uh, once a month as a grab sample, which we have to, to take to an accredited laboratory for analysis. Uh, uh, but then uh, we realized that the, the, because of the fact that the, the, the analysis is actually very expensive, we cannot do it at a, at a much more frequent than, than we are doing at the moment. Uh, that is one challenge of ex expenditure. But then we also have the problem that uh, by the time we pick up uh, any trends of, of pollution in the river, then, then the, the pollution has already moved because it will be after about five or six weeks. So that creates a problem. But then we, we, we think that if we try to involve the, 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 the uh, communities for doing that, we also have a challenge that uh, as a regulator, we need to be able to, to, to take some of the transgressors uh, to court, open criminal cases and charge them based on information that doesn't come from an accredited laboratory because a chain of custody must be such that uh, we, can, we can account for everything that happens and the court can give it a, a green light. Yeah. And do you see any opportunity with collaboration with any of the um, entrepreneurs that are with me here on stage? Yes, for instance, uh, if you look at uh, Tamo, I think so. The ones who are busy with the 
um, uh, 20,000 network in Africa. That would be a very good opportunity for collaboration, especially with Hydronet, uh, which is in our place. If that's uh, uh, Tamo, you know, that innovation, if it's, if it's uh, implemented in some parts of our, our places here in Africa, it will be a very good opportunity because uh, it will help us to be able to collect more information, more data. So I think it's a good opportunity and we can collaborate with, uh, with them. Thank you so much for setting up this connection. It's really great talking to you. It's far away, but you see him at the same time so close. Maybe you have one final message for us before saying goodbye? We can just say that we would like to continue to collaborate with, the, with our Dutch counterparts because we, the innovation that we've came up with uh, is, is assisting us in making decisions. We, we are actually managing a transboundary water management uh, where we share our, our water resources with uh, neighboring countries like Swaziland and Mozambique, both of which are downstream. So we, for us to be able to create that trust amongst ourselves as, as people in the same basin, we need to be able to, to operate using the same uh, platform so that the decisions that we make are transparent to our counterparts downstream. Thank you so Thank much you. for setting up this connection. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. So what did you hear that could be helpful? Or is it more like a moral support to get the collaboration going? Well, I think it's good to hear that they want to collaborate. And I would like to add that it's not only about data. Uh, we need to transform this data into information and to reduce the impact of uh, the devastating effects that uh, we are facing uh, now, for example, with floods, but also with droughts. So for climate change. So change data into information and uh, enable people to become proactive. And uh, I think we cannot prevent extreme uh, events to happen eh, with climate change, but we can do our utmost to reduce the impact of climate change. And I think there's a lot of knowledge in this world and with collaboration, that's very positive. Yeah, what I liked a lot was that they work with uh, local people observing, just like Texomate. Uh, I think that you know, that cut, it's a two-edged uh, sword. One is you get more data, but you also engage the citizens uh, to uh, observe the problems and to make them think and make them aware about these things. And I think that's a very cool thing uh, there, and both in Texel and in South Africa. I think that's a very interesting way forward. Great. Yeah. Maybe a closing um, remark from you. Uh, yeah, with Texel Made, we uh, collect a lot of data, and that's uh, where the fellows from South Africa also need uh, more data, is more information, and uh, yeah, we're just glad to have it. Thank you very much. Thank you Thank for you. joining me in the discussion. Thank you.